Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Model Aircraft and I have got a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, exciting I guess, review for you today. I'm going to try to make this in one part but it may end up being two parts uh, and the reasons will become evident uh, shortly. What this is, if you've clicked on this video, hopefully you've used the algorithm or the search engine to work out Hey, I'm building a CH-53E or an MH-53E from Academy in 148 scale and I want to look at what um, parts, aftermarket things are available for it and I heard ResKit make some good stuff and you have heard it correct. What is different, however, this is the new stuff, not the old stuff. ResKit made these parts, or similar parts, these are there's some add-ons, I'll explain very shortly, uh, when they first really came to market about nine years ago and they're the ones I use for my build. In fact, I'll put a link up here and this will be in my playlist of this of my big build of the Academy CH-53E. I used their parts um, and they were first generation 3D printed parts and you'll see shortly why things have moved onwards somewhat dramatically. I've picked these up at the post office uh, had to sign for them and everything. They're you know nicely secured mail directly from Ukraine. Didn't actually take that long. It was actually during one of the the bombings that they just had recently. And yeah, I I, I just quickly see. I have opened it. Okay, I opened it up and I just went, oh, holy effing! You know what? Um, these are a quantum leap. So and I mean that there's no hyperbole there uh, or hyperbole. For the Americans who don't speak English, the um, the these these are just amazing. Now the proof's in the pudding. The proof is always in the pudding. They look great in the in the boxes, and I'll show you shortly. Does it actually go together? And that gets me to part two of this review. I will build these um, because yeah, I'm having if if they work, I'm tossing out all the I did all this scratch build stuff on the nacelles. Uh, and I've done a lot of wiring work on, and I've melded the two parts, the Academy parts and the old, the nine-year-old res kit 3D printed parts with a real dodgy layer lines, and, you know, so the details just aren't there, although they are, they are here in the new ones. So I'll be tossing them out, whoosh, over the shoulder, in the bin they go, and plonking these onto my C Stallion, Super Stallion, and I want to get that damn kit finished. So without further ado... That's the intro done. Let's open up the box and have a look. Now, when ResKit first announced they were going to do an, up, an upgraded main rotor, they actually did a folded version first. And I messaged them straight away saying, oh, please, 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 can you do an unfolded, you know, on, you know, as you know, I like to do everything in flight if possible. Um, one of these folded up with all the blades, you know, really, yes, you reduce the storage space in your display cabinet, but oh, you'll just lose all the impact of this massive machine with its seven blades. Uh, and yeah, they actually did, boom, straight, almost straight away, they said, yeah, we are doing an unfolded one, so there it is. So that's what you get with this particular kit, the 48400. This is the main rotor hub. Uh, plus the gearbox housing that goes inside the kit itself, plus a few more extras in here that they actually have done their research, and I'll show you that in a second. So that's the first one that we're going to look at, and the second one is an expanded one. So this replaces their old one, whereas this one is actually expanded. Instead of just doing the, um, these are the engines, there's two of them, there's actually three, um, they actually give you parts for all three engines, but the two external nacelles the parts they gave you originally are only these, I think they're the EADS filter with these multi-dot things at the front of the nacelle air intakes, and that was it. You didn't, you had to use the Academy parts. The problem was they were the wrong size. They were probably 145th scale, 143rd scale. They were too big for the Academy parts, uh, and a lot of details are missing, and in the end, they're a complete waste of time. They're, they're, they're terrible. And I advise someone else, John Bryan in England, he... He had these parts and I told him, don't go ahead with it. Don't just use the Academy bits, juice it up a little bit with some Edward. Nah. What they've done instead is they've made them through a correct size. It looks like it. I will compare them shortly. And they've included the entire nacelle, which I had to do a lot of scratch building and super detailing to make it look anywhere near the real thing because the Academy parts are really soft. So that's what's going to be in this box. Not just the two nacelles, but a third engine. Anyway, let's have a look at the big end first. Nice solid box overall. Open her up. You get a nice piece of foam there. Instruction booklet. OK, 
Okay, in colour, you get a little bag with decals, 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 water slide transfers, because each one of these blades has a colour code. Let's zoom in. We've done our intro stuff. Let's actually look at what we're doing. And a mask sheet. Why is there a mask sheet? In fact, there it is in the instruction. There's a mask sheet with a cutout. Hmm, I wonder why. If you've watched a certain German builder of an MH53E, he hyper detailed one, you'll understand why. So, everything is either in a nice little baggie like this. So there's the, look at all that, 3D printed wires. You don't have to do any wiring. <laughs> Thank effing, oh. Okay, so <laughs> these parts look familiar. I remember them, assembling them. That's part of the road, there's the two parts of the road hub, but the supports are 10,000 times better. We'll show, I'll show you that in a minute. Even more supports, that's the transmission housing um, thing that goes inside there. Oh, we've got one part that's not covered up and that's the top rotor hub. Beautiful, de that detail is amazing. I can't see, there's a few scratches on it, but that'll, that'll fill in with one, one coat of primer and they've done all the correct raised rivets on the outside oh my god what else we got we got pins metal pins hmm, i can't remember what they're for and the remainder of these parts are in cages this is a thing i've seen with a lot of 3d printing manufacturers uh, laminar flow design who makes the ma magnificent conversion kits for the griffin engine 130 scale th 130 second scale spitfires he does this as well puts them in cages so these are all the rotor hubs look at that so you got the you got the the generator thing there, it's got all that's got these parts in the original one you had to super glue on, they're all done. The hydraulic lines are all done. You don't have to do anything. Um, so you look at these things, look, look at these lines in there, can you see them? They're not supports, that's the hydraulics, because each one of these rotor hubs has got about 20 or 24 hydraulic lines, depending if it's a folding rotor or not. And they're all there. They're all bloody there. Holy hell. Anyway, let's put these all back in the box. We need to look at the instructions because I've got to tell you, I think this is going to be epic. Okay, oops, don't forget this. Let's have a look at the, oh, come here. There we go, instructions. So, gives you the part list on the outside and immediately I can see that the um, connecting bolts, these rods, on the original part, they were a flat, literally a flat piece of photo etch with two eyes. Here, they've done a proper solid, I actually scratch built and made my own. We've got some rods, we've got a mast set. Uh, oh yeah, look at that detail, oh my God. Okay, so, um, basically you just cut the, uh, there we go, that's what the metal rods are for. That's ingenious, yes, you pin them to the under rotor hub there through these holes that's fantastic so that's a real secure fantastic way of doing it oh, well done reskit that's great so basically you just get all the the, the seven rotor hub attachments uh, boom 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 put them underneath sandwich it in with this fellow here which looks like a much better part i mean i remember the keying of that into the other ones it just did not work this looks a lot better uh, we've got the R8 points. What are those? What are the R8 points? Let's let me swish to there. R8. Come on, where are they? Oh, okay, that's the caps. Those little caps there. Go on each of them. And then you get the alternative. You can either have that hollow, the whatever they call it. I can't remember what they call this. Uh, the um, the hat that goes over the top of it all. Uh, you, can have, you can have it empty or um, have this covered in the middle. And then it just all clips onto the top there like that and then we move to the transmission housing so that's the um the part that goes inside the helicopter there and they're showing if i just skip across here they're showing you how to modify the academy inside fuse large pieces i had to do that already so that's that's done you just got to cut away some of the support so you can actually get it in the lower part of the um of the hub goes onto those those three, oh yes, it's got a locking piece there, so you make sure you're in the right, you're doing the right angle. Okay, and then you put the completed assembly over the top. Oh my god, this looks so much easier. Then we got all these big Jesus bolts or whatever they're called. They just clip in like that. Now this will be interesting, you have to modify the um, uh, the academy bit. 
Okay, so they give you separate rotor hubs. I actually had to cut them off individually from the Academy plastic bits and then graft them onto the outside of these bloody rotor hubs because the, re the original res kit ones were rubbish. Just did not fit. Now, here's an interesting development. Yes, this is true. The Academy top fuse large is inaccurate. The cut the cutouts there, they're supposed to be a squared or a radius square one there, this corner here, whereas they just go straight across. And there's also a small cut there. So they provide you a nice template here to cut that open. So it's nice and accurate so you can see the parts. Well done, ResKit. Oh my god, you're getting 10 out of 10 so far, my friends. We plonk it inside the fuselage half. And then we slot in and they're pre-drilled. I had to drill all seven of these to actually accept the original Academy plastic um, blades. Bloody hell. Okay, so now we've got all of the decals for because each of the blades has its own color to cut a color scheme uh, if you see all the reference photos and they're showing you where to put them all uh, i am seeing some of the um, it must work out that way i'll have to look at the details but there are about uh, 14 hydraulic lines that come from the cap here into each see them there in the corners there one's missed because it's a fixed um that one of these one of these rotor attachments is fixed it's not actually folded so there's only so it must be just 12 or i can't remember my number it looks like they're all done already that's where i got held up when i was super detailing mine oh, oh my god that looks amazing so let's just take i'm not going to cut these away from the supports tonight i'll do that another time because i will i do want to build this and i want to compare them to the um the academy one so let's have a look so we zoom in, oh, upside down this chain. Okay, that is stunning detail. Can you see that? That's all 3D printed. So there's the supports here on the outside. Excuse my muddy fingers from gardening. Uh, so look how fine that is with the supports. Okay, so that's underneath. That's what you actually see underneath the cap. So you actually won't see much of that. You'll see it sideways. When we go sideways in, I can't wait to take that out and have a look at it. We've got another small tree here of some very fun. So there's the caps for each of the heads. And there, oh, that's beautifully done. Look at that. Look at the, the molding on. That's the rotor um, sort of cuffs, I guess you could say, the sleeves. And they've got recessed holes and then raised rivets. Um, oh, that's so much better than the Academy ones. That's going to look bloody fantastic. And there's the center caps for the rotor hub. Oh, gorgeous. All right, let's look at open a few more. Oh, can't fault this yet. Like I said, I think the proof's going to be in the pudding, which is when we actually get these parts off the supports. Have a look at that. I cannot see with my naked eye, and I'm using my good glasses, I can't see any layer lines at all. Beautiful detail. They've captured the, um, the raised bolt which I had to scratch build and I made them too big. So these are much more petite and much finer. And they've got really good thickness between these, uh, these flanges here. Oh yeah, that's beautiful, beautiful. This is gonna be magnificent. And this one, the original res kit one had flash between every one of these octopus sort of things. And it's, it was almost impossible. In fact, uh, what's his name? The German chap that I was following, he couldn't get it all off finally either. It wasn't just me with my sausage fingers. But this looks fantastic. Everything's all drilled through, so those metal pins will go through those holes and it will capture those rotor heads in beautifully. Oh, 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 yes. Give me more, give me more. I'm all for hyper, my, my belief system nowadays, I really don't want to scratch build or hyper detail stuff unless I can just go, hey, buy me a 3D part put it together, bingo bongo, trademark Harry Houdini models, and then it's done. So we got the nice raised, here we go, bolts on the outside of that cup. You can keep, look at those beautiful little holes there. Oh, this is amazing quality. Shall we keep going? Oh, that one, that's just a frame. Okay, so here's the transmission housing. Like I said before, all of the hydraulic lines are done. Don't have to add any detail. They've all been 3D printed. It's all there for you. Oh, yeah, boys. All right, so we've got one more. 
and I'll have a little break and I'll, I'll um, wipe the drool off my face. So here's the individual rotor hubs. We've got the sprue markings down there telling which one's which, so keep an eye on that. That's amazing. I'm just going to have a very close look myself here. Um, yeah, look at that. It's got the folding mechanism on each one. It's got the lines. I'm trying to dis differentiate between what, is, what are the 3D supports for uh, when they're printed. That's these vertical lines and then these tiny little ones. And what's hydraulic lines? Because it looks like they have most of them. Oh, look at it down there. Jesus. Yep. Got to get this built. Got to get this done. All right, let's go have a look at the other stuff. The next box, the nacelles, the engine nacelles. The 53Es have three engines, um, one internal at the back and then two big ones. There's no room, so they lob on the outside. Same system with this. We get a nice instruction sheet, uh, plus it's got an addition. If they forget to tell you something, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then everything's jam-packed in there. Look at that. Okay, so let's just bring these out and have a look. So we've got a few parts that are done in plastic bags and the rest is caged. I'm just going to bring these all out. Now this will actually replace not just the Academy parts, but also if you've got a Wolfpack um, set up with the, uh, with the exhaust. So there's, that's the one, the third one at the back, and here's the two internal ones. So one piece uh, exhaust, don't need to worry about seam clean up on this fellow. Yeah, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It's also got the flange running the outside. I'll see if I can remember to put a picture up of the, um, there's a metallic flange with raised bolts. Really, really hard. It's just there, see it in there? Really, really hard to make that yourself to size to get it to fit properly. Uh, John Bryan did a really good job on his. Um, this is done for you. <laughs> it's all done. All you need to do is just paint that. That's bloody fantastic. So here are the other intakes. They're looking really good. You've got the, the raised ribs halfway down. And you've got the bolts separating and the sleeve at the bottom. And they're hollow, which means I think I saw them before. There should be. Yep, here they are. So in this little thing, you've got the actual exhaust fans. Oh, and we've got a little bit of photo etch. What's the photo etch for? Hmm. Photo etch. Okay. So there they are. Aren't they magnificent? So crisp. Beautiful. Really easy to cut off. That'll be really easy to do. Uh, and then we've got some photo etch. I think that's for the um, flapper valves on the air inlets. They give you four when you only need two. I think that's right. Yeah, that's really easy to do. Cool. Okay, so let's put that aside there. Let's open this one up. We're doing this back to front. We're going to look at the parts first, then we're looking at the instructions. Why? Because I'm one making the video, not you, so I'll do what I bloody well want. Um, and you love these little cages? They're little... Uh, it's like a little milk crate. It's cool. Oh, those parts are really fine. That's going to be super bloody fiddly. What are they for? Is that all the struts? Oh, that's the struts. Some of which you don't see. Uh, I've seen them on reference photos and you can get away with not adding them. That's for the support struts for the nacelles. Bloody hell. Yep, and this, this was my nightmare. See these half angled pipes here? Okay. Each of the external nacelles, Port and Starboard, has three pipes that hold it to the side of the fuselage, bolt on. And this, let me just zoom in with my Mark 1 eyeball. Yep, it's got the proper flange. And I could not build that, scratch build that myself, because I have big effing fingers. And they've done it all for you. I hope that fits, because if it... Oh, look at that. They've even got the holes. Can you see that? See the little holes there? That's cor that's so correct. They have really done their research on this. They, this is not... They're not mucking around here. This is bloody... I mean, this... Okay, this is a little minor detail, and you're thinking, oh, what are you going on about back up? But... It's so, it just sticks out like dog's balls, those, these mounts. And if you don't get them right, they look like shit. And they have got it in one. Wow. Why have they given you four? You only need two. Well, maybe if you stuff one up. It's a great idea. Why not put another one? It's only a little bit of resin. Um, those fans are great. Oh, that's the internal fans for the EADS filter. And they even give you the pipe work for the filter too. Have I been in camera this whole time? I'm looking at myself. Okay. Ooh, uh, Glenn McGrath, as we would say down here. Okay, so we've got the uh, 
the looks like the nacelles are multi-part okay okay no worries we can deal with that so that's one of the filter sides and they've done that so you can put the pipes on the inside if you want to and there's the oh that looks great okay so here are the proper this is what you actually got nine years ago you got these and that's it so now they've completely redone them uh, let's have a look i should really take that cage off shouldn't i okay they've done the proper these little holy thingies i don't know what they are these little dots they've done the proper i think last time they were missing one or two rows that's been done properly that looks fantastic they've included the the flange can you see that there's a strap there properly you had to add that with edward photo wedge which i believe was oversized and they've done both bottom and lower ones res kit you have done your research they've even got the latches correctly there see that in the corner oh this is a thousand times better than the academy stuff and the old res kit stuff that's just a repeat that's the other two you can see it's different because they've got the holes there for those semicircular mounts so these are the outside ones that one's for just hopefully it bloody fits that's for the uh, internal engine and now we get to the nacelles which you can't really see unless i take them out of their thing but here they are they're pretty much one piece and oh yeah boys they've got the right latches beautiful raised rivets i did that all myself i'll show you maybe not in this video the next one i'll show you when i build these up that is so much better than anything i could do by 30 fold they've done the cutout properly i actually did that myself that's for the fire extinguisher oh they've done that beautifully you've got raised proper bloody rivets on the outside that's supposed to be there they've added the the there's a seam line in the middle they've added that and then at the bottom end here you've got yep proper straps there at the back you've got all these raised rivets you've got this oh, oh I want to build it, I want to build it. Oh shit. Okay, there's an addition. <laughs> settle down, settle down. Okay, so here's the addition to the instructions. Obviously they missed something. Oh yeah, we miss these things that go onto the exhaust. That looks pretty simple. Okay, let's look at the actual instructions. So you get um, you have three of the filters, you get two housings, this is the, the parts you get matched or sorry um, opposite exhaust and you get that one with a flange on it you get the internal piping and the other parts and then all these tiny little parts with some photo etch let's see how it goes together haven't looked at this yet all right so here's the left side rear uh, internal engine the engine's actually inside on top of the spine of the fuselage here on the inside it goes in like that that i used or i i've actually used a wolf pack uh, resin part for that but it doesn't include that that metallic flange on the outside this has got it bang and it goes done Whoa. all right now we're putting we've got some hydraulic pipes going into the nacelle there look at the detail they've even got the latches here that's great you got the exhaust oh yeah i thought so here we go it's for the the photo etch it's for a flapper valve on this little outlet thing that you glue on here there's a little fan on that put these two parts together and then you put the main nacelle body with a filter and that should build up to one unit and then yeah look at these tiny little struts so these are these tiny struts you can barely see you've got to crane yourself around they've added caps there yep there it is there there's the other oh so they must need four okay so there's the thing there you've got there's the first for the rear engine okay uh, filter and it's got the mounts i've scratch built and made them myself so it'll be very interesting to see if i need to replace i think i will i'll just well this one definitely is better than my top one and then yeah there's the left engine just going straight in there oh they even include there you go there's a little vertical piece that goes underneath this one so they've included that right side's the same you see that there put the parts together <sighs> one piece oh it's bliss same same you get the struts underneath this major strut there's a semicircular one going in here um, that's what it looks like assembled done all right what can I say that hasn't been said already um, I need to build these I need to get this done which means I need to finish 
riveting my fuselage. I've done all the other detail bits. Uh, I will come back to you shortly. I will just finish here because I need to just get going. But that was a review of the res kit replacement pieces, the engine nacelle and the main rotor for the CH53E, the MH53E. It now makes this kit worthy because the academy kit is great it's very accurate it looks great it's missing the major thing it's missing is the external rivets which they've done for their ah1z for the viper in 135th scale if they ever retool it they should retool it with rivets it is an absolute pain to rivet the whole thing but it if you don't rivet it with external uh, additional rivets not not divots actual raised rivets it doesn't look right and now with these parts yeah You've just replaced all, you just made it look 95% real <laughs> instead of 50% with the, um, you know, the dodgy old plastic stuff from the, yeah, highly recommend it. Go get it. The price doesn't matter because all the shipping, because you are literally going to get almost a one for one uh, accurate hyper detail set here. And that's, if that's what you're into, and I am for this particular aircraft, I really want this to look as best as I possibly can without as minimum fuss as I can. These are 10 times better than their old ones and 100 times better than the Academy parts. So yeah, go get one. See ya.